Let's start our third chakra day with a little centering. I'm going to ask you to close your eyes or focus on something in the room. And once again, bring the energy from the base of your spine up your back on the inhale and down the front on the exhale. And do the grand tour around your energy field. And then as you inhale, draw that focus to the third chakra, the solar plexus area, seeing a radiant yellow ball of energy in your third chakra. Suggest that your strength of will, the effectiveness that you have in manifesting, that your self-confidence, that your passion and warmth of character will increase through our work during this next month. Once again, suggest that your strength of will, effectiveness, manifestation, self-confidence, passion and warmth of character will increase through our work this month. And let yourself take a couple of deep and carrying breaths and come on back. Okay. We're all in yellow today. Beautiful yellow altar. Vibrant yellow altar. I'm now going to go through the material around the third chakra. We're going to take notes on some of the questions that are asked during this. So, I suggest that you have paper and pencil ready as I go over the third chakra material. So, as Anadia suggested, in the progression from earth to water to fire, we go from the grounded body to the flowing emotions and now generating energy. The energy rises into the third chakra with the potential to become power, to build strength and develop our will. This directs your actions and propels your vehicle down your life path. Power gives us the ability to carry out a task, to complete an action, or to make something happen. It governs the conversion of the metabolic energy in the gut, that's like the furnace, the boiler system for our body, the powerhouse. And it's where the mastery of the body energy through the direction of universal love energy rather than absolute control or fear. We're looking for a personal power that comes from a mastery over our energy through the direction of universal love rather than trying to exert our power through control or fear. So if my power comes from fear, then I have to make sure everyone is under my thumb. If my power is coming from love, I have a lot more latitude to trust that when I leave the room, it's not going to go into total disarray and everyone's going to throw things around and <laughs> put nasty pictures of me on me. <laughs> so, how to harness our energy without suppressing it, creating a strength of will so that this changes random circumstance in life into a desired outcome. Will is created through the integration of intention, which begins in the consciousness and filters down through the chakras, and energy generated by the body metabolism. So there's pure raw force coming up from the bottom, raw, and then there's intention and clarity coming from the top, meeting in the third chakra. And that is power. Now, if we have just a lot of energy, but there's no intention, there's no clear direction of it, then it's just like, Wah! you know, going out all over the place, getting dispersed and pissed away and pissed off. On the other hand, if there's all this pure loving intention, but there's no juice, it's really wimpy. You know, oh yes, I want to save the world, but unfortunately I'm sick today. And I'm... <laughs> when intention and energy are out of balance, will is weakened. If they are balanced, the power ensues naturally. So let's pay attention to the circumstances that enhance our energy and the ones that suppress it. Form a clear purpose as a focus for your will. Strengthen it through dedicated practice, consistently applied. Our job here is to train our impulses into a mastery that will serve us for the rest of our life. And that's how actually I'm taking this course. It's, I'm not just 
looking for something to keep me occupied for a month, you know. I want whatever I build, and that's what I'm shooting for with this second chakra at work. Okay, I got something going now. I want to keep this on track. I mean business. So how to deepen your connection with your third chakra? Starting off with the body. The third chakra rules metabolism. So it's where you turn food into energy. The major organs of the digestive system are involved here. The stomach, the liver, the pancreas, the gallbladder. Pay attention to your food intake, your digestion, your energy levels. I don't mean right at the moment, now, but yeah, during this next month. Look for physical imbalances, indigestion, hypoglycemia, diabetes, chronic fatigue. Disorders of the liver or the pancreas, the stomach, the gallbladder. Examine the daily flow of your energy levels. How would you rate your energy level during the day? Is it steady? Do you have cycles and highs and lows? What naturally increases your energy during the day and what drains it? How would you rate your digestion? What could you do to improve it? Do you spend your energy wisely by setting good boundaries? and keeping to realistic goals. The endocrine gland associated with the third chakra is the pancreas. The pancreas influences metabolism by its secretion of insulin and glucagon, mm -hmm. which regulate blood sugar levels. Pancreatic polypeptide regulates the release of digestive enzymes. The psychological issues involved with the third chakra have to do with our ego identity. The third chakra relates to the time in life when we are creating an ego identity, a self-definition. Ego is not a dirty word here. Oh, that's not spiritual. No. The ego is the executive function. It helps direct our life. It gets a bad rap when it's like, who we think we are, you know, that's it, it's just the ego. So it's the executive aspect of itself that organizes our game plan. You know, what are we going to do today? Like a house, it's important to have a consistent home base, but we don't want to be trapped in it. So we increase our self-worth when we stick to our goals, and we defend ourselves and take risks. If the ego is weak, then so is the sense of self shaky poorly defined, wishy-washy. Well, wherever you guys want to go, I can make it to me. On the other hand, we can get overly attached to the ego. To uh, interfere with your ability to outgrow your current self-definition. You can get a real narcissistic focus. I always think that of that classic line, you're out for your first date and the guy's talked for two and a half hours about himself and he says, well, enough about me, how, how about you? What do you think of me? <laughs> your ego, if you're over attached to it, can limit your ability to move to the next level of the heart chakra. You're all wrapped up in your needs and wants. So is your sense of self consistent and strong? Can you stand your ground when challenged? Do you have a positive regard for yourself? What is your current level of self evaluation based on how much I please others or if my eyeliner is on right. Are you comfortable differentiating from others? Do you want to just like kind of blend in, you know, go along with the crowd? Don't be noticed. Are you true to your own individuality in the face of peer pressure to conform? Hey, it's fun, everyone's doing it. Come on. <laughs> Are you overly focused on your own issues or needs? You can constantly seek attention for approval from others. If so, what is it you're really seeking? How can you find it within yourself? What is your deepest hunger? Now, when we were talking about the first chakra, the rights, we talked about the right to be, and the second chakra is the right to have. And the third chakra, your basic right to act, action. The way we channel our energy into behaviors that transform the world around us. 
Some folks are inhibited and others take action too quickly. Are you able to take appropriate action when necessary? You know, these may sound like yes or no questions, you know, but obviously they're not. Sometimes you lean that way, sometimes, but, you know, like what's your tendency? Where could you lean a little further in the other direction? Do you seek other people's permission to take action, letting others control you? Again, now, maybe in some areas of your life you don't, but others you might. How was your right to act impacted in your childhood? Were you supported in your activities? This one I think we should pause on and we'll, we'll take a little time just to make a few notes here, all of us. Were you afraid of punishment, criticism, or disapproval? Whose punishment, criticism, or disapproval were you afraid of most? And then, how do you punish, criticize, or disapprove of yourself now? Let's just make a note on that one. Does anyone want to share what you just discovered in looking at this? Well, I do. <laughs> Something just hit me here. It's like one of those things that you do so much you don't even recognize you're doing it. I've got this part of me that I demand time for myself. And I'm going to stay with this and really, you know, whether it's taking a bath or reading the news story. Something, yeah, this is my thing. But then, oh, now I'm late. Oh, and I'm afraid that I'm being rude and I'm going to get disapproval. And I'm, gonna, you know, and so there's this like struggle with who gets the time, me or them. It's like, my God, the amount of energy that goes into this little game, push pull that goes on inside of me. Oh, thank you, Jeremy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it will be no surprise that the demon of the third chakra is shame. So the deficient response in the third chakra is the shyly retreat in order to avoid confrontation or exposure. The excessive response is to overcompensate, the compulsive need to assert your power, ability, or achievement. But to overcome the power of shaming or shame, we've got to focus on the overall purpose of our actions, to affirm our worth and our loving intentions. I believe to overcome the power of shame, we, we can't shame ourselves out of shaming, shaming right? <laughs> like, aren't you ashamed of yourself? Look at how much shame you're doing. <laughs> like, oh, yeah, and so you got to focus on the overall purpose or higher intention of our actions, affirm our worth and our loving intentions. So, are you troubled by frequent feelings of shame? If so, externalize these messages by writing them down. You never do it right. You don't have what it takes. You're not as good as everyone else. Once you've written these messages down, see if you can find their sources. Like, whose voices do these messages resemble? What were these people's agendas for you? Then, write down a more supportive message that might be closer to the truth. Reflect on this message whenever the shameful internal message arise. Just before, as we were doing our little writing exercise, I was getting my father's way of being disappointed. Just to say I'm pissed off or I'm hanging no, no. Disappointed. There's that, mmm that sucking out of energy. <laughs> you know? I mean, someone taking a whack at you, you can duck or something. You know? Or get <laughs> mad back. Yeah. But disappointment is just like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. Oh, man. Or, my mother is hurt. Again, sometimes that's more insidious than the anger, you know, which it's up front. You know what it's about. You can deal with it, but it's like, oh... You've hurt me so much. <laughs> Makes me want to hurt you more. My father used to tell us how we hurt our mother. Oh, he yeah. Oh, tell us right. how if he would, oh, right. his mother's really hurt. You should go apologize. <laughs> I yeah. always hate this. <laughs> yeah. Mm. This is our time just to... <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. Right. Put it in the fire. Yes. 
Give it to the fire. Go to the old, make room for the new. Mm -hmm. So our behavior, conducting actions from a place of power and responsibility. Are you comfortable claiming your power when there is a need to do so? Can you assert yourself effectively without dominating others? You know, a lot of people I've seen, myself included at times, you know, oh, I don't want to appear overpowering, or I don't want to seem authoritarian. Oh, whatever, yeah, whatever anyone wants, this is great, you know. But then when it finally gets to be enough, you know, then it's time to assert yourself. Then it comes on like gangbusters. Then it's like the petty tyrant, you know, comes out. So, like, what's in between here, you know? Something in between being Mr. Milk Toast and Godzilla. <laughs> Do you maintain healthy boundaries for yourself, saying no when you need to, and protecting that which is important to you? Oh, sure, 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 you want to take my computer for a day? Uh, no, just if it really is fine with you, okay. But if it's not, and you just want to appear like a good Joel, you know. Mm -hmm. Do you maintain the focus of your discipline, such as sticking to a diet, an exercise program, or spiritual practice? And if not, what gets in the way? What are your rationalizations? What are the costs? of your distractions. So how can I support myself to come to healthy agreements? See, well, I don't want to be a jerk like my uh, old man was, so I've got to exercise every morning. Heck with that, I don't got to do nothing. I'm going to just rebel and shoot myself in the foot my whole life. So how can I support myself in a way, and self-talk, I believe, is really key. So your teacher is assisting you, Jill, to give different kinds of self-talk messages. Yes. It's beautiful. Healing and balancing your third chakra. Working the element. The element of the third chakra is fire. So we can increase the fire in our body by eating hot, cooked, or spicy foods, drinking hot teas, avoiding ice drinks. Increase metabolism by engaging in vigorous exercise. Digestion is slowed by overeating, so keep your meals light and simple if digestion is a problem. Ginger and bitter flavors can aid digestion. In the home, feng shui or bastu. Fire represents the power of transformation as well as passion, warmth, change, expansion, so increase the fire to invite rapid changes. If you want to set up your environment because you think you're a little slow on the uptake or you're not getting done what you want to get done, well, symbolize this increase with bright colors, especially reds and yellows. It's also heightened by strong contrast in colors. Fire is softened by monochromatic themes. High gloss paint moves energy more dynamically than flat finishes. <laughs> yeah. Symbolized by sunbursts, pointed shapes, triangles, pyramids, diamonds, these are all mm. that get the fire going. Objects or designs on objects, flower arrangements, crystals, window displays, mirrors, upward shooting plants. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wood energy, trees and plants support fire. Mm. Candles, lanterns, tea lights, fireplaces, wood stove, just increasing the amount of light in general. We had a class this morning, a pet class, and we're talking about the SAD, or the seasonal affective disorder, and the lack of light, it's like the fire is going out. What do you need to do to keep your fires burning? Activities to increase the fire in your life. Risk taking. So power doesn't develop unless it's exercised. Take risks, move beyond your comfort level. Sure, you're going to make mistakes and feel clumsy at times, but just looking good makes it difficult to move forward. Do you take risks in your life, and what happens when you do? Do you allow yourself to make mistakes as part of your learning process? On the other hand, you may think that you have too much fire in your life. You're just like, whoa, out well, there all over the place burning the camel at both hands. How to decrease fire in your life? Well, 
softening contrast, smoothing out triangles, increasing the water element. Too much fire can undermine tranquility and stability. It's difficult to concentrate, sit still, or to focus your will if you're burning up. So to decrease fire, well, avoid spicy foods, caffeine, or other stimulants. Take time to relax, to meditate, to breathe deeply, to take time off. You feel anxious just sitting still? What happens when you aren't doing something? So take time to notice the feelings that arise in a moment of quiet. In your body, what happens to your third chakra when you sit? Does it collapse into your belly, rounding your shoulders, compacting your stomach? So just sitting up straight and make more room for your fire. How do you stand? Again, does it collapse or do you lift out of your pelvis? So practicing good posture and basic grounding too. What do you do when you're tired? Do you take time to adequately rest and refresh yourself? Or do you reach for an artificial stimulant? More coffee? <laughs> well, I don't do that. So pushing your energy system in all these ways can deplete it over time. Practices to strengthen your will. Set a reasonable intention at the beginning of the day and exercise your will and accomplish it. Now, here's something that I've noticed myself maligning recently because I think it can be obviously overdone and you can become compulsive or type A with it. But, you know, it has really helped and it's been useful in terms of my own organization and focus is make a list of what I want to do and check it off when I've done it. Still works. Completing a specific practice each day for a week or a month. So actually taking time to say, okay, I'm going to do this and follow through. It really helps also with the self-esteem and the identity of the third chakra. Now, since the third chakra has only soft tissue in front of it, it's crucially important for your belly to have good muscle tone. This supports your posture and your lower back and contributes to a sense of power and purpose. So let's look at the excesses and deficiencies in the third chakra. I direct your attention to the second page of your handout, interpreting excess or deficiency in the third chakra. Take heed. We're going to work with these right now. So, excessive characteristics, dominating, controlling, competitive, arrogant, ambitious, hyperactive, stubborn, driven, compulsively focused towards gold, attracted to sedatives, deficient characteristics, passivity, lack of energy, poor digestion, tendency to be cold, tendency towards submission, blaming, low self-esteem, lack of confidence, weak will, poor self-discipline, use of stimulants. Balanced characteristics, responsible, reliable, good self-discipline, positive sense of self, confident, warm, energetic, spontaneous, playful, humorous, able to take risks. Is uh, poor boundaries part of the deficient characteristics also? Yes, I would definitely say that. So let's then look at the next page and fill out the first three areas. Going over this list that I just read, look at what do you consider your strengths in the third chakra, your weaknesses, and what's important for you to focus on, okay? Let's do this together. Let's complete the evaluation form, the final assessment on what your goals are, the tools, and your commitment. And again, we're going to do this easily and quickly, so we're not going to spend a long time on this. So just hit the nail on the head. What are your goals for your work in the third chakra? What tools, in other words, what exercises that you think are best suited to you? And then what commitment do you have for yourself over this next month in your third chakra work? 
thank you, blessings to us all.